Praise the Lord, everyone, and welcome to the Marmette Community Church uh, Bible study here on Wednesday evening. And uh, we certainly want to invite you into our home and uh, want you to take advantage of this Bible study. So uh, what do you say? Let's uh, get our uh, Bibles out and uh, turn to the book of Hebrews and uh, then move on over to chapter number 7. And we're going to get into uh, this reading here today. Uh, so very valuable. Uh, there uh, are a couple of things we'll be talking about tonight. And we're talking about uh, the Levitical priesthood under Aaron and Moses and the law. And then we'll be talking to about a spiritual priesthood under the king of Salem, Melchizedek, which is also, uh, we're referring to uh, the Lord Jesus Christ and a spiritual uh, household, a spiritual priesthood, because uh, Jesus was from the tribe of Judah, and uh, there was no mention of the priesthood uh, under uh, in the, uh, the tribe of Judah. But uh, the priesthood in the Old Testament law was under the tribe of Levi and Moses and Aaron, his brother Aaron. Aaron was the high priest and Moses was uh, the prophet. And uh, under them, they were both from the tribe of Levi. So uh, Jesus, on the other hand, is a priest, a high priest after the order of Melchizedek. So he's a super spiritual priesthood different from the law and, and different from the flesh. Uh, this is a spiritual uh, high priest we're talking about today. And oh, I am so excited to talk about it because uh, this is a better covenant. We've got a better covenant based on better promises, based on everything great. So what do you say? Let's get into the Word of God. Start here at Hebrews chapter 7. I'll read the, the, the 28 verses with you. And you can read them out loud with me if you'd like to. And you can read along with me out of your Bible. Hebrews chapter 7, verse 1. For this Melchizedek, king of Salem, priest of the Most High God, who met Abraham returning from the slaughter of the kings and blessed him, to whom also Abraham gave a tenth part of all, first being by interpretation king of righteousness and after that also king of Salem which is king of peace uh, verse 3 without father without mother without descent having neither beginning of days nor end of life but made like unto the son of God abideth a priest continually now consider how great this man was unto whom even the patriarch Abraham gave the tenth of the spoils. And verily they that are of the sons of Levi who received the office of priesthood have a, a commandment to take tithes of the people according to the law, that is, of their brethren though they came out of the loins of Abraham. Verse 6, But he whose descent is not counted from them received tithes of Abraham and blessed him that had the promises. And without all contradiction, the less is blessed of the better. And, and here, this is verse 8, Men that die receive tithes, but there he receiveth them of whom it is witnessed that he liveth. And as I may say so, Levi also, who receiveth tithes, paid tithes in Abraham, for he was yet in the loins of his father when Melchizedek met him. So uh, we're going to go to verse 11. If therefore perfection were made by Levitical priesthood, under it the people received the law, 
what further need was there that another priest should rise after the order of Melchizedek and not be called after the order of Aaron, which was of the tribe of Levi. Verse 12, For the priesthood being changed, there is made of necessity a change also of the law. For he of whom these things are spoken pertaineth to another tribe of which no man gave attendance at the altar. For it is evident that our Lord sprang out of Judah or of the tribe of Moses and Moses spake nothing concerning the priesthood out of the, the tribe of Judah. Verse 15 And it is yet far more evident for that after the similitude of Melchizedek there arises another priest. Hallelujah. Who is made not after the the law of a carnal commandment, that's a fleshly commandment, but after the power of an endless life, eternal life. For he testifieth, verse 17, Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. For there is verily a disannulling of the commandment and going before for the weakness and unprofitableness thereof. For the law made nothing perfect, but the bringing in of a new better hope did, by which we are, we draw nigh to God. And inasmuch, verse 20, as not without an oath he was made priest. For those priests were made without an oath. But this with an oath by him that said unto him, The Lord swear and will not repent. Thou art a priest after the order of Melchizedek. By so much was Jesus made a surety of a better testament. And they truly were many priests, because they were not suffered to continue because by reason of death. But this man, because he continueth forever, hath had an unchangeable priesthood. Wherefore he is able also to save them to the uttermost that come to God by him, seeing he liveth ever to make intercession for them. For such an high priest became us who is holy, harmless, undefiled, separate from sinners, and made higher than the heavens, who needeth not daily as those priests to offer up sacrifices, first for his own sins, and then for the people's sins. For this he did once, when he was offered up himself. For the law maketh men high priests, which have infirmities, or sicknesses, or weaknesses, and they certainly die. But the word of the oath, which was since the law, maketh the Son, who is consecrated forevermore. Amen. We have a better covenant. It's based on better promises. It's based on a better high priest. It's based on a, a better plan of salvation. It's based on everything is better. It's more. There's more of it. It's better. I mean, the old was good, but the new is better. Amen. And it's going to be really great. Uh, the best part is when we get to heaven to meet our wonderful Lord and Savior. All right, so we'll start off here at verse 1 as we go through uh, the teaching here tonight. We'll try to be quick so this can get downloaded quickly. Uh, for Melchizedek, king of Salem, priest of the Most High God, who met Abraham returning from the slaughter of the kings blessed him. So this lets you know that uh, Melchizedek, king of Salem, priest, a high god, uh, he is meeting Abraham returning from the slaughter of the kings and blessed him. This is totally different than uh, what we had under the law with the Levitical priesthood uh, and what we had with Aaron and with Moses. 
All right. Now look at verse 3. Without father, without mother. Now, the only person, uh, the only, uh, I say person, but the only uh, being that he could be talking about here is God. Because God is without father, in verse 3, is without mother, without descent, having neither beginning of days nor end of life, but made like unto the Son of God, or the flesh of God, abideth a priest continually. So a lot of uh, people think uh, uh, that uh, Mary, and, and if you hear the prayer coming from many people that claim that they are Christians, uh, they say, Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for our sinners now and at the hour of death. Well, God doesn't have a mother. Look at it here in verse 3. Uh, without father, without mother, without descent, having neither beginning of days nor end of life. And, uh, so uh, this is exciting. We're talking about God. And when you look into the New Testament and you see the word Emmanuel uh, coming out of the Old Testament, it said his name shall be called Emmanuel. Well, when you get to the New Testament and you begin to look up what Emmanuel means, it means God with us. It doesn't mean the Son of God with us. That's the with, with us part. But Emmanuel literally means, the English interpretation is, God with us. So when you saw God, and you were looking right at Jesus Christ. And the Bible says that God was on the inside of Christ reconciling the world to himself. All right, let's move on down here. Now consider how uh, great this man was unto whom even the patriarch Abraham gave the tenth of the spoils. Now, we're talking about the God-man now, we're talking about Jesus Christ, our high priest. Uh, and verily, in verse 5, they were the sons of Levi who received the office of the priesthood have a commandment to take tithes of the people according to the law, that is, of their brethren, though they come out of the loins of Abraham, but whose descent is not counted from them to receive tithes of Abraham, and bless him that had the promises. So, as we're looking here, uh, look at verse number 8. And here, men that die receive tithes. So this is written by maybe Apostle Paul or one of the New Testament authors. Uh, many people think it was Paul. Uh, but Paul is saying here, here in the New Testament, here men that die receive tithes. But there he receiveth them of whom it is witnessed that he liveth. It has to be God, and uh, that's the, uh, uh, the high priest, and we know him uh, coming to Jesus Christ as a priest, a high priest, after the order of Melchizedek. Verse number 9 says, And I may say also, Levi, also who receiveth tithes, payeth tithes in Abraham. So uh, a minister of the gospel in the New Testament also pays tithes, as the, so do the people. For he was wet in the loins of his father when Melchizedek met him. All right. So if we look at verse number 12. For the priesthood being changed, there is made of necessity a change also of the law. Look at verse number 14. For it is evident that our Lord sprang out of Judah, of which the tribe Moses spake nothing concerning a priesthood. And it is yet far more evident for that after the similitude of Melchizedek, there arises another priest. See, the law is gone. Uh, the Old Testament is ended. The New Testament has a new high priest. Uh, you know, and it's, it's not somebody sitting on a, on a throne with a staff and a, a big fancy hat and a white robe. Uh, this is Jesus Christ. He's the high priest. There's only one high priest in Christianity and that is the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the Holy One of Israel. He which is, he which was, who which uh, was dead, and behold, he's alive forevermore. 
and he has the keys to death, hell, and the grave. He's the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the ending. He's he which is and which was and is to come. He is the Almighty. Praise God. Hallelujah. Uh, who is made not after the law of a carnal commandment, in verse 16, but after the power of an endless life. Praise God. Hallelujah. Look at verse 19. For the law made nothing perfect, but the bringing in of a better hope did. I like that word, better. Well, the law was good, but the New Testament plan of salvation is better. We have a better priest and a better plan of salvation. Amen. Amen. Thank God for that which is better. Look at verse 22. We're thinking about the word better now. By so much was Jesus made a surety of a better testament. In other words, a better plan of salvation and a better uh, dispensation. A better testament, a better witness. Amen. A better plan. I'm glad for that. Amen. Uh, the old was good, but Jesus Christ is so much better. Moses was a great leader and a wonderful man and a type of Christ. He was a shadow of what Jesus would be. But he was nothing compared to what Jesus was. Amen. And Jesus is now our high priest. And so we are so thankful for that. Amen. Uh, but look at this. And verse 23, And they truly were many priests. So there's lots of priests in the Old Testament. Why? Because they were not suffered to continue by reason of death. In other words, there was lots of priests because about every 40 years one of them would die. And they'd have to have another high priest. But Jesus, this man, because he continues forever, praise God, hath an unchangeable priesthood. We will never need another high priest. Amen. We don't need it. People, all kinds of preachers can die. Uh, leaders of churches can die. But we'll never have another high priest. Jesus is our high priest. Wherefore, he is able also to save them to the uttermost that come to God by him seeing he liveth to make intercession for them. For such a high priest, verse 26, became us, who is holy, he's holy, he's harmless, he's undefiled, he never did anything wrong, never committed any sins, amen, there's no guile found in his mouth, he wasn't wicked in any way, Nothing evil ever came out of his mouth. No evil thoughts came to his head. He was separate from sinners and made higher than the heavens. I mean, he is glorious. Why? Because God was in Christ to reconcile the world to himself. We have a better covenant. That's really what the book of Hebrews is about. What they had was good, but what we've got is better. It's a better covenant based on better promises. Amen and a better high priest for sure. Uh, so our new high priest, in verse 27, he doesn't need to go daily as the high priest to to offer up a sacrifice first for his own sin. Under the law, the priest had to offer up a sacrifice for their own sins. But that uh, wasn't necessary with Jesus because he had no sins. So uh, for this, he did once when he offered up himself. So he offered up himself for your sins and for my sins. Praise God. I am so excited about the, hook, uh, the book of Hebrews. Amen. Uh, the, the last verse here, verse 28. For the law maketh men high priests which have infirmity. In other words, uh, they have sicknesses. They get sick. They can't do their job right when they get sick. But the word of the oath which was since the law maketh the son who is consecrated forever. So uh, Jesus Christ is never going to get sick. He's never going to have a shortcoming or a failure. Uh, but he understands your pain. If you have uh, arthritis in your hands, he knows what it's like to have sore hands. When you drive two nails through two hands, you know what pain is. He knows what a headache is too. Where they put the crown of thorns on him and they beat him in the face with their fists 
and uh, he had blood everywhere. Uh, you think you've got back problems and you have back pain? Oh, you take a cat of nine tails and rip your back open where it looks like a, a, a hamburger coming out of a packet from Kroger's or wherever you get it. Uh, you think about that and, and you think about, well, I've got this sore feet and uh, uh, you think his feet weren't sore? When you put two feet together, drive a nail, one nail through both of them and hang a person on a cross to die. So he is a high priest but he's, he's never going to die again. He's never going to suffer again. He paid that price one time, and that was it. And he was done. Amen. I'm glad uh, we got a chance to study Hebrews chapter 7. It's been great sitting down, looking at the camera. I think about all of you while I'm teaching this lesson, and I want you all to know that I love you dearly, and you are so important to me. And uh, I'm looking forward to seeing you Sunday morning at 11 o'clock where, again, we'll be teaching the good word of God and preaching uh, the messages from on high. So meet with us there. Come prepared. Bring a visitor with you. Amen. Bring him with you. Have him sit uh, seven, six feet away and wear a mask. And Amen. They can hear and enjoy the good word of God. You're safer at uh, the Marmette Community Church than you would be uh, when you go to Walmart. Amen. You never know who's going to Walmart or where they've been. But most of God's people, uh, they're uh, going by the rules and uh, they're paying attention. They're respecting God because they know that this is worldwide. Uh, it's not a joke. It's not a, a political thing. Uh, but it's uh, something that we, we don't know how it spreads. So uh, we just have to ask God to protect us in Jesus' name. But well, we'll see you next time. God bless you.